I am Pinoy Rob. I am Pinoy Rob. I am Pinoy Rob. Hey. I am Pinoy Rob. For the headlines, weather forecast, low pressure area through brings potential weather disturbances across the country. In local news, man charged with rape and homicide in the assault and murder of his female cousin. High vote transfer registration under investigation. Capital funds assured not to be sent on Unabia's second term run. 28th Kumbira opens in CDO. National News House lawmakers want to know about the use of Vice President Duterte's confidential funds and other issues. International News Former General Prabowo begins his term as President of Indonesia. Entertainment Chris Aquino opens up about cancer scare and teases upcoming show. Sports NCAA issues clarification on Medic's response to JM Bravo incident. International feature Pope appoints 14 new saints, including Damascus martyrs. National feature Philippine journalists hold forum on reporting elections in the age of AI. Trivia What does water do to your body? If you find this segment informative, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe to stay updated with our latest news and share this broadcast to your friends and family. Your support helps us keep you informed. Help us get our first 10,000 subscribers. Your engagement matters. Liking, sharing, and subscribing to our content not only helps more people discover the important stories we bring you, but also supports our team's hard work. It boosts our visibility in the algorithm, making it easier for others to find ways to stay informed. Plus, it helps us generate more resources to continue delivering the news you rely on. Thank you for being part of our community. Good morning Philippines, Maganaw Maga Luzon, Mayo Adla, Visayas, Mindanao. Today is Wednesday, October 23, 2024. I am Athalia P. Sanyal. Local news, man charged with rape and homicide in the assault and murder of his female cousin. A case of rape with homicide has been filed against a 20-year-old man who allegedly raped and killed his female cousin in Barangay Dansolihon, this city. The shocking incident has raised concerns in the local community regarding safety and the prevalence of gender-based violence. The information was disclosed by Cagayan de Oro City Police Officer, Spokesperson Lieutenant Colonel Evan Vinyas, who stated that the suspect, known as alias James, was quickly apprehended during a pursuit operation led by the Lumbia Police Station in response to the crime reported on Wednesday morning. According to Vinyas, the suspect confessed to committing the heinous act which prompted his immediate custody and the filing of charges by the prosecutor's office yesterday. Preliminary investigations revealed that prior to the assault, the suspect struck the victim's head with a rock while she was doing laundry. He then proceeded to rape her and dispose of her body over a cliff. 
The police are urging the community to remain vigilant and report any suspicious activities as they continue to investigate the circumstances surrounding this tragic event. High Vote Transfer Registration Under Investigation The Commission on Elections Central Office is set to investigate several areas across the country that have experienced a significant increase in registered voters for the upcoming 2025 elections. This decision prompted Comelec Chairman George Garcia to establish a task force aimed at determining whether any violations of the country's election laws have occurred in relation to the sudden surge in vote transfer registrations. The focus will be on scrutinizing the processes and documentation involved to ensure transparency and compliance with electoral regulations. Misamis Oriental Provincial Election Supervisor Attorney Carlito Ravello emphasized that Barangay Carmen in the city, along with several towns in Misamis Oriental, is not isolated in facing this issue. He noted that other regions across the Philippines have also reported questionable increases in registrants, raising concerns about the integrity of the voter registration process. Local election officials are particularly worried that these anomalies could undermine the credibility of the electoral system and lead to potential disputes during the elections. They are calling for a thorough examination of the circumstances surrounding these registrations to safeguard the democratic process. As of now, the task force has not yet commenced its investigation related to this issue, but the public and local stakeholders are nearly awaiting the findings and actions that will be taken to address the growing concerns surrounding voter registration irregularities. Capital funds assured not to be sent on Onabia's second term run. The provincial capital has made it clear that there will be no funds allocated for Governor Peter Onabia to advance his political ambitions as he seeks re-election in the 2025 elections in Misamis Oriental. This announcement comes in light of concerns regarding the potential misuse of public funds for political campaigns. Provincial Administrator John Venice Ladaga issued this statement to address speculations that, he, that the capital might leverage the basic services it provides to the province in support of the governor's campaign efforts. He emphasized the importance of maintaining transparency and accountability in the use of public resources, especially during an election year. Ladaga stressed that Governor Onabia has a long-standing commitment to not using government funds for political purposes. He pointed out that this principle was upheld even during the governor's initial campaign when he first ran for office. According to Ladaga, Onabia himself has made it clear that he will not tamper with the capital's funds designated for essential services that directly benefit the residents of Misamis Oriental. This commitment is particularly significant as the provincial government aims to address pressing issues such as hunger and poverty, which continue to affect many communities. In addition to his role as governor, Onabia is recognized as a prominent businessman with a diverse portfolio of enterprises that extend beyond the city and into other regions of the country. His experience in the private sector has been credited with contributing to his governance style, focusing on economic development and community welfare. The provincial administration is keen on ensuring that the services provided to the public remain uninterrupted and effective prioritizing the needs of the constituents over political aspirations. As the 2025 elections approach, local officials are urging the community to remain vigilant and engaged, ensuring that the electoral process is conducted fairly and without the influence of misappropriated public funds. 28th Kumbira opens in CDO. The Cagayan de Oro Hotel and Restaurant Association is currently holding the 28th edition of Kumbira at the Atrium 
Lemkit Kay Center, Barangay Lapasan, celebrating the rich culinary heritage of the Philippines. This event aims to unite groups and individuals skilled in the field of Philippine culinary traditions, providing a platform for chefs, culinary students, and food enthusiasts to connect and, their, and share their passion for Filipino cuisine. Kohara President Jeffrey Limbonai noted that the Kumbira offers a great opportunity for trade exhibitors to showcase their products and services to both local and international clients. The event has attracted a variety of exhibitors, including local farmers and food artisans, eager to present their unique offerings. With the theme Keeping Traditions Brewing Innovations, Kumbira invites the public to witness cooking competitions, savor delicious dishes, and participate in workshops and demonstrations by renowned chefs. These interactive sessions aim to inspire attendees about traditional cooking methods and innovative culinary techniques. The Kumbira event is free for the public to attend and runs for three days from October 16 to 18 this year, making it accessible to food lovers and families alike. Over the years, Kumbira has become a celebrated occasion, fostering community spirit and promoting Filipino cuisine on a larger scale. As the event unfolds, local officials and culinary advocates hope that Kumbira will continue to inspire future generations to appreciate and explore the diverse culinary traditions of the Philippines, ensuring these rich heritages are preserved and celebrated for years to come. Weather forecast, low pressure area trough brings potential weather disturbances across the country. A trough of a low pressure area refers to an extended region of low atmospheric pressure associated with an LPA, often resulting in unstable weather conditions such as a cloudy skies, rain and thunderstorms. While the trough is not as concentrated as the core of the LPA, it can still bring significant weather disturbances across large areas, including scattered rain showers and thunderstorms. In the Philippines, troughs of LPAs are common during the wet season, when monsoons and tropical cyclones are more likely to develop. The potential effects of a trough include heavy rainfall that can cause localized flooding and landslides, particularly in coastal and mountainous regions. Thunderstorms and strong gusts of wind are also common, especially in the afternoons and evenings. Although an LPA may dissipate, there is always a possibility that could develop into a tropical cyclone, depending on its interaction with other weather systems and sea conditions. The Philippine Atmospheric Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration regularly monitors LPAs and issues weather bulletins to inform the public. People in vulnerable areas are advised to stay updated on weather conditions and take precautions as even an LPA's trough can lead to significant disruptions in daily activities, particularly in flood-prone regions. I am Pinoy Rob. I am Pinoy Rob. I am Pinoy Rob. Hey. I am Pinoy Rob. National News. House lawmakers want to know about the use of Vice President Duterte's confidential funds and other issues. House leaders on Sunday urged Vice President Sara Duterte to stop what they called her boodle theatrics 
and address the issues surrounding her use of confidential funds when she served as Education Secretary. Lawmakers this week raised concerns regarding the Department of Education over its use of certifications over its use of certifications from the armed forces of the Philippines to justify 15.54 million pesos in confidential fund expenses. The certifications, which reportedly supported various expeditors, have come under scrutiny as lawmakers question the legitimacy and transparency of these transactions. In light of these concerns, members of the House of Representatives are demanding a thorough investigation into how the confidential funds were utilized, including whether they were spent in accordance with existing laws and regulations. They emphasize the importance of accountability in government spending, especially regarding taxpayer money. Vice President Duterte has faced criticism not only for the use of confidential funds but also for her handling of various issues during her tenure as Education Secretary, particularly in the areas of education quality and accessibility. They emphasize the importance of accountability in government spending, especially regarding taxpayer money. Vice President Duterte has faced criticism not only for the use of confidential funds but also for her handling of various issues during her tenure as Education Secretary, particularly in the areas of education quality and accessibility. International News Former General Prabowo begins his term as President of Indonesia. Former General Prabowo Subianto was sworn in Sunday as President of Indonesia, aiming to elevate the country's standing on the global stage as the world's fourth most populous nation. His inauguration marks a significant moment in Indonesian politics as he takes the helm following a contentious electoral battle that highlighted deep divisions within the electorate. In his inaugural address, Prabowo emphasized the importance of national unity, economic growth, and addressing pressing issues such as climate change and food security. He expressed a commitment to enhancing Indonesia's role in regional and international affairs, including strengthening ties with neighboring countries and participating actively in global discussions on sustainability and trade. Prabowo's administration is expected to focus on infrastructure, development and investment in technology, which he believes are vital for boosting the country's economy. His leadership will also be closely watched regarding his approach to human rights and democratic governance. Areas where he has faced criticism in the past due to his military background. The new president faces immediate challenges, including rising inflation and public discontent over economic disparities. With a significant mandate from voters, Prabowo is determined to implement policies that promote social welfare and improve living standards for all Indonesians. Entertainment. Chris Aquino opens up about cancer scare and teases upcoming show. Actress and talk show host Chris Aquino revealed on Sunday that doctors initially suspected she might have colon cancer, the same illness that afflicted her late mother, former President Corazon Aquino. In a heartfelt essay shared on Instagram, Chris, who has been battling autoimmune diseases for years, expressed her relief upon receiving the news that she is cancer-free. She emphasized the emotional toll that the health scare took on her and her family, especially given her mother's history with the disease. Chris also discussed her ongoing health challenges, including her struggles with various autoimmune conditions, which have significantly impacted her quality of life and professional commitments. 
Despite these difficulties, she conveyed her determination to remain positive and proactive about her health. Additionally, Chris hinted at a new project, suggesting that she might return to the small screen soon. While she did not provide specific details, fans are eagerly anticipating her comeback and the opportunity to see her share more of her life experiences. Chris's candidness about her health journey resonates with many as she encourages others to prioritize their well-being and seek timely medical advice. Her openness serves as a reminder of the importance of health awareness, particularly in the face of family health histories. Sports NCAA issues clarification on Medic's response to JM Bravo incident. The NCAA on Sunday clarified the response of concerned parties after Lyceum of Philippines guard JM Bravo fainted during their game against the Aureliano University Chiefs on Saturday. In a statement, the NCAA emphasized that medical personnel immediately attended to Bravo following the incident, providing first aid and ensuring he was safely transported to a nearby hospital for further evaluation. The league underscored its commitment to player safety and the importance of having medical staff on site during games, stating that they follow strict protocols to handle emergencies swiftly and efficiently. The incident raised concerns among fans and players regarding the safety protocols in place during NCAA games. In response, the NCAA reiterated that they continuously review and update their health and safety guidelines to ensure the well-being of all athletes. They are also working closely with sports organizations and medical experts to implement best practices in player safety and emergency response. Bravo, who regained consciousness shortly after being attended to, is reported to be in stable condition. The NCAA also stated that they will continue to monitor his recovery and provide support as needed. As the league prepares for upcoming matches, they remain dedicated to prioritizing the health of their players and enhancing emergency response measures. International Feature Pope appoints 14 new saints, including Damascus Martyrs. Pope Francis canonized 14 individuals on Sunday, establishing a new group of saints that includes the Martyrs Damascus. These Martyrs were killed in Syria during the Ottoman Empire and have become powerful symbols of Christian persecution throughout history. The canonization ceremony took place in St. Peter's Square, attended by thousands of Catholic faithful from across the globe. During the Mass, Pope Francis highlighted the significance of these martyrs in the ongoing struggle for religious freedom and the resilience of faith amidst diversity. He called on the congregation to draw inspiration from their sacrifice and to remain steadfast in their commitment to justice and peace. Among the canonized were several notable figures, including those who stood up against oppression and defended their faith despite facing dire consequences. The Pope emphasized that their stories serve as a reminder of the importance of standing up for one's beliefs and protecting the vulnerable in society. In his homily, Pope Francis encouraged the faithful to em emulate the courage of these saints in their daily lives and to promote dialogue and understanding among different faiths. The canonization of the martyrs of Damascus, he said, is especially relevant in today's world, where Christians continue to face persecution in various parts of the globe. National Feature Philippine journalists hold forum on reporting elections in the age of AI. Dozens of Filipino journalists, members of the academy, 
and various organizations are expected to attend Tuesday's forum focus on the challenges and risks posed by artificial intelligence in news coverage, especially during elections. The event titled AJF at PH Connect Forum will, will feature three experts who will deliver presentations in a hybrid format, both online via video conferencing and in person at the Aboitis Tech Space of the Asian Institute of Management in Makati City. Topics for discussion will include the impact of AI and on journalism practices, not ethical considerations in using AI-generated content, and the role of technology in enhancing voter engagement and information dissemination. The forum aims to equip journalists with the necessary tools and knowledge to navigate the evolving landscape of news reporting in the age of AI. In addition to expert presentations, there will be and interactive discussions and Q&A sessions to encourage dialogue among participants. The forum seeks to foster collaboration and knowledge sharing among journalists and academics, ultimately strengthening the media's role in forming the public during the electoral process. The event is part of broader initiative to address the implications of emerging technologies on journalism and promote responsible reporting practices as the country approaches the upcoming elections. Trivia: What does water do to your body? Water is essential for various bodily functions and plays a critical role in maintaining overall health. It is vital for preserving the health of every cell, supporting biochemical reactions necessary for metabolism and energy production. Water ensures smooth blood flow, transporting oxygen, nutrients, hormones, and immune cells throughout the body. Additionally, water aids in thermoregulation when the body heats up, it evaporates through sweat to cool down. It acts as a lubricant for joints, reducing friction during movement, which is especially important for athletes. As a key component of bodily fluids, water facilitates the transport of nutrients, electrolytes, and hormones, ensuring that cells receive what they need to function effectively. It also assists in digestion, enhances nutrient absorption, and is vital for waste removal helping to dissolve and transport waste to the kidneys for elimination. Proper hydration is linked to cognitive function, with even mild dehydration potentially leading to fatigue and reduced concentration. And that was the information we got from here and abroad. Keep listening and watching. Please subscribe to Pinoy Rob on YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and share and like. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. If you find this segment informative, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe to stay updated with our latest news and share this broadcast to your friends and family. Your support helps us keep you informed. Help us get our first 10,000 subscribers. Your engagement matters. Liking, sharing, and subscribing to our content not only helps more people discover the important stories we bring you, but also supports our team's hard work. It boosts our visibility in the algorithm, making it easier for others to find ways to stay informed. Plus, it helps us generate more resources to continue delivering the news you rely on. Thank you for being part of our community.